Welcome to The Breakdown, where we break down some f***ed up shit. Today we're breaking down a film about a mother of a school shooter and how she deals with the aftermath of the event. Want to find out what it's like for Eva after the crazy events that happened? Stay tuned for The Breakdown. The movie starts off with a big black, I mean BBC opening and then we see a close up on some open blinds. Then we transition to an introvert's worst nightmare, just like some big food orgy. Lots and lots of tomato play. Obviously though, this scene is a representation of something. Next we see a woman who obviously ain't having a good satisfied life right now. She goes outside to find this scene. Her house has been vandalized. Then it cuts to a close up on a little girl playing pirate and the mommy Eva goes for a kiss but no, actually she's drowning herself off. Yeah, off. We cut back to the past and we see the titular character, Kevin, but I wouldn't be mad if you call him Barry Allen. Back in the present, Eva gets ready for a job interview and it seems she is well known by everybody. Then back in the past, we see the woman's old job and she leaves the job in a distraught state as we hear police sirens. Then back in the present, she gets the job despite how negatively popular she is. Then after leaving, some random woman slaps her. Somebody sees this happening, but Eva lets it go. Back in the past, Eva makes it to a crime scene along with the parents. Then back in the present, she notices red marks on her face. All her attempts to think of better times are drowned out by the police sirens. Through more flashbacks, we see that a massacre is taking place. And then the woman goes to some penitentiary. She's been here before, and then we see she is waiting on her son, Kevin, who has a habit of biting his nails and holding it in. Look at that. It cuts to her giving birth with an unhappy face. Then she is trying to fix her vandalized house as neighbors look on. She tries to connect with her new baby, Kevin, but he cries whenever he is near. Although when it comes to the father, the baby absolutely loves him. Back in the present, Eva seems to run into someone at the grocery store and hides. She runs away with an entire broken crate of eggs just to get away and even eats the eggs with those shells all in it. Back in the past, we see Kevin is a pretty quiet and unenjoyable child. He won't speak, smile, or have any fun. Eva takes him to a doctor, but the doc says nothing is wrong. Then for once, he finally begins to play with Eva, but it's him doing things on his own volition. On Halloween night back in the prison, some Halloweeners hassle Eva and then we see that Eva's disconnection with Kevin leads to disconnection between the husband. On a lunch break in the prison, Eva gets called by a wheelchair guy. We see he had been shot in a massacre. Back in the past, Kevin catches Eva giving the father a blowjob. He starts exhibiting the symptoms of some personality disorder and an obvious dislike for Eva at a young age. Then Eva finds that Kevin has vandalized her working room. Although, Kevin consoles and plays innocent in the presence of the father. Kevin is very annoying to Eva and a little too big for diapers as well. He shits on himself, she fixes it, then he shits on himself immediately after which angers her causing him to throw him. Yeet! Which breaks his arm. Kevin doesn't like Eva, but he doesn't tell the truth to the dad and lies about how he broke his arm, holding leverage over her, which allows him to do whatever he wants and antagonize Eva further. Then Eva gets pregnant with the daughter from the beginning, but Kevin doesn't like her. Then we see that Kevin got sincere and oddly starts to warm up to Eva, such as saying sorry and becoming more comfortable around her, but in turn starts to antagonize the father. Back in the present, Eva gets a knock on the door by some religious members asking if she knows where she'll end up after death. She depressively replies that she will end up in hell where she belongs. Then back in the past, we see that Kevin's niceness was just an illusion and things switch back soon after. We see some more family dynamic between Kevin and the little sister and he talks bad to her despite her respect for him. Then Eva catches Kevin beating his meat and he doesn't stop beating even when she looks. He even turns towards her. Back in the present, Eva is at a Christmas party. One of her peers asks her to dance but then when she politely says no, he gets all disrespectful and calls her a stuck up bitch. She leaves and sees another mother and daughter outside, reminding her of times with her daughter. The two catch Kevin looking at a poster until he vanishes like Harry Osborn in Spider-Man 3. Kevin and Eva go to play some mini golf. Then after it starts raining, they go home and they get ready to go to dinner. At dinner, Kevin taunts Eva, antagonizing her more as the two can't even have normal conversations because of Kevin's hateful attitude. Eva searches Kevin's room and finds the CD. She goes to play it but finds it's a hack attack made by Kevin. She asks why he has the CD and he says there is no point. That's why. He knows right from wrong but he doesn't care. Then at Christmas, Kevin gets a bow and arrow for a present. We see the mom has concerns about this. We see that the daughter also has got a hamster, but the hamster goes missing later on. Eva makes up a story to tell the daughter. As the mom throws food in the sink compactor thingy, it gets stopped up and we see that this is where the hamster is. Then off screen, something happens to the daughter in which she has to get a glass eye. Eva blames Kevin, but the father keeps his opposing opinion. Back in the present, as Eva waits to see her son, a sad woman sits by her and then Eva consoles her. Now we know why the girl had an eye patch in the beginning. We learned that the two parents are getting divorced as Kevin hears on. Then later, Kevin gets a package in the mail and we see he orders some bike locks claiming that he will sell them at school. 
finally, we see the scene at the beginning of the movie. Then we see a school setting in which Kevin puts those bike locks on doors, locking people from getting out. He gets his bow and arrow ready. Then we see that the mother came looking for Kevin. She sees firefighters cutting those bike locks. Then Kevin walks out and surrenders to the police as scores of people shout in anger and sadness. Then bodies get dragged out as Eva dips the spot. We see that Kevin shot at people with his bow and arrow during the gym period. Eva makes it home looking for the husband and daughter and we see that blinds close up again. Eva walks towards it and finds the dead body of the husband and the daughter as the sprinklers go. Eva walks away and we see how Kevin committed his atrocity position wise. Then it comes back to the prison. Eva starts to put order back in her life and she goes to visit a freaked out Kevin in jail. It's been two years since the shooting and he's about to be moved to the adult prison. She asks him to tell her why he did it, but we see his mind begins to crumble and he doesn't know why he did it it despite he thought he did. The movie ends as time's up and she gives him a hug that we wouldn't expect him to accept. Then Eva leaves sadly as the screen goes white. Well that was a pretty disturbing film guys. It's sad to see that shootings like this are becoming so commonplace in today's society but we don't usually put ourselves in the shoes of the parents of the killer. Anyway enough about Kevin, we need to talk about that spooky stuff. I think there are a lot of bias that makes people think that school shooters must have bad parents. But we can obviously see that Eva was a caring mom and it was a loving family. Some beings are just mentally unsalvageable in a terror sense despite their bring ups. Certain factors like genetics can add to that. The most disturbed woman goes to when Eva found the bodies of the husband and the daughter. Not only did she find out her son killed many innocent kids, she found out that her entire family had been destroyed. Not a good sight. The most enjoyed moment goes to when Eva threw Kevin. If Kevin was black, he would get that ass beat every day. And that's it. This movie was released in 2011, same year that Batman stopped Hugo Strange in Arkham City. And the director, Lion Ramsey, used a book written by Lion Shriver. Thanks for watching. We need to talk to Kevin with me. This has been a breakdown. Thanks for watching this breakdown on We Need to Talk to Kevin. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for some new videos. Also, check out some of those old videos. We got a lot of interesting movies in the different disturbing breakdown playlists. Anyway, spooky out.